Hi, this is Steve Smith, and this is episode 63 of Weekly Dev Tips. I'm at NDC London with Troy Hunt, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about passwords and security. Welcome, Troy. Hey, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. All right, you want to kick off? Just yeah. Go, pass What have you got? Go well, for it. We, we sort of discussed this just now. We said, all right, what's, what's a good tip? And it's, it's probably going to be, feel like the most obvious one to a lot of people, but it's, it's one that we, we just are not getting on top of, and that's password managers. So number one absolute top of the list security tip is get a password manager and join us amongst the one percenters of people on the web that actually use one. And, and put all your things in here as well. So here's, here's an interesting, we'll, we'll easily blow 10 minutes on this. So <laughs> password managers are not just about passwords, right? So a lot of people often say, well, you know, like why don't I just use the one in Chrome? Uh, the great thing about a password manager is it's a vault for all secrets. So I use the, the password manager uh, one password, the number one password. And I have uh, obviously all my passwords in there. I've got a whole bunch of notes about server configs and things like that in there. I've got my credit cards in there, my driver's license, my passport. I've got all the secrets and things I need in there. And that's not just to be a single place to put them and they sort of sit there statically, but when I go and buy something online, I auto-fill the credit card field out of my password manager. When I want to share things with my my 10-year-old son, who's now getting himself online a bit, he has a vault that we share and I, I put the secrets in there. So have you ever sort of had that situation with your partner or your kids or something like that where it's like, hey, can you send me the password for the thing? And it's like, all right, what are all the different ways I could send this? What's the most secure? Maybe I'll send it by WhatsApp because it's end-to-end encryption. <laughs> and then it sits on both devices, though. So, so password managers are about a lot more than just passwords. And if you, if you use them smartly, it actually makes life a lot easier, too. What kind of capabilities does that have across different devices, right? Like I can use that on my browser, but then when I use my phone or my child's phone... I assume there's an app that I can use, and it somehow, regardless of whether I'm using iPhone or, or Android or what have you, it, it'll integrate with my browser, even though that's outside of the app that I installed? Well, it depends on the, on the password manager choice, of course, but one of the reasons I chose 1Password back in 2011 now was that it worked on all the clients that I use. So my, my normal day-to-day life is a combination of two different laptops, a desktop, an iPhone, and an iPad, and it works across all those, works across all the Android things as well. And each one of those devices has a rich client and it syncs via a cloud service, encrypts everything client side, then syncs up the cloud. And then everything has uh, browser integration as well. So on the PCs, when I'm, let's say when I'm in Chrome and I want to log onto a website, I go control backslash, fill in my master password, which if I've rebooted the machine, is the full password. If I've not rebooted, then I just Windows hello myself uh, via the, the fingerprint reader on my laptop or via the, i got one of those um, Logitech Brio cameras on my PC. So that does the whole Windows hello facial thing. So that's great. And then integration points on iOS, it plugs into the whole password manager API model that they've got in there so that when you're in either the browser or a rich client app running locally on your machine, uh, locally on your iPhone, for example, you just click a little button and you go, okay, passwords, and it selects the right password out of your keychain. So there's, there's integration at both the browser and the app level on desktops and mobile. All right, and this is a free app, 1Password? So 1Password, I think, runs at something like it's $2 something a month for the personal one, and then I think it was about 5 bucks a month for the family one, which you, which you can use up to five people in your family. And that's because you're paying for this cloud subscription syncing and, and all of that. Well, you're paying for a bunch of things. When I mean, you're paying for the syncing, you're paying for the ongoing support, you're paying for all the extensive audits and things like that you're doing. You're paying for the $100,000 bug bounty program they run <laughs> if someone can actually figure out how to get in the keychain. And it, look, I mean, there are free options out there. I mean, KeePass, for example, is a very, very popular free open source one. Uh, I don't think it's better or worse because it's open source. It's just another offering. Uh, my, For that one, you have to sync the data yourself somehow in Dropbox or something. I believe you so. you got to figure out your own sync mechanism. Now, mind you, there are some people who say, well, look, I never want my password in the cloud. It always has to be on my device. Sure. Uh, look, I, I think life probably gets pretty hard <laughs> for people like that if you're using multiple devices and you need some sort of a strategy. And I like the way 1Password has done it, so I'm comfortable with that. But look, I mean, if you look at it and go, uh, you know, I really don't want to spend three bucks a month on a password manager. I mean, man, it's, it's a cup of coffee. Like, and it, it, it literally controls your entire digital life. So, yeah, <laughs> right. priorities, man, right. priorities. Right, no, that's probably worthwhile. I agree. What other things uh, do you put in that password manager? For instance, how do you feel about re- password recovery questions? 
like where did you go to school or what was your mother's maiden name? Do you do you, uh, <laughs> do you propose putting in accurate answers for those, or I would you put, put in? I, I put those things in my LinkedIn profile where everyone can see them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, certainly where I went to school. So what, what I tend to do with uh, security questions like that is I just generate random strings. So it'll be like. I don't know what my mother's maiden name is. I just know it's got a lot of funny characters in it. And I know it's in my password manager. I know where to retrieve it from. Now, if ever my bank actually verbally asked me, like, I'm screwed. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be, I'll be like, pulling out the password manager and relaying it. And there'll be some bank teller just looking at me going, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, yeah, no, you're right. I generate those answers, which, which uh, obviously takes out the whole sort of risk of predictability, which is the problem with static-based knowledge authentication questions like that. Sure. And that's something I assume you'd recommend folks do as opposed to offering that information? Yeah. Look, it's, I mean, geez, the whole static KBA thing. That was actually why I went to Congress. I went to Congress because of the risk of static-based knowledge authentication questions in the era of the data breach. And the, 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 the challenge we've got there is that static KBA works well insofar as everyone understands how to use it. Like, everyone understands what their date of birth was or the school they went to, the mother's maiden name, whatever. But the problem is, is that it, it's obviously information which is frankly quasi-public a lot of the time. Right. Uh, and plus, it's information which, being static, once it's exposed, you can't change it. Yeah, there's no way to reset it. No way to reset it. So I would well and truly strongly recommend generating that stuff. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been a great tip. I hope uh, more people will use a password manager and have, hopefully have more secure accounts as a result. No worries. Thanks for having me, mate. All right. Cheers. Oh.